Um, Ian Foster, I'm, I'm the All Black head coach, and uh, as the All Black head coach, I've had a busy week. Um, you know, we've been through a Stein Lager series that uh, we as a team didn't achieve what we needed to achieve. And the result of that is that the last three or four days have been busy. We've had a, some robust conversations uh, with us as a management, with New Zealand Rugby and with our senior players. And, and that should happen. And you'd expect that to happen. And from those conversations, there's been... I'm, I'm proud of the, the accountability levels, I guess, that I've heard from the players about their part, from, from my management team's part, and we've got an utter commitment and, and a clear plan of how we are going to move forward. And, um, you know, we, we never are happy when we don't achieve what we want to achieve. We understand the fans aren't happy with that. But you have a promise that we are uh, going to looking forward to getting stuck into our work when we get together and to go and play in this rugby championship and in South Africa, a game of rugby that New Zealanders can be proud of in this team. We, um, I've also heard that, there's going to, that there does need to be some change and for us to, to achieve that. And right now I am working behind the scenes to to achieve that, um, you can ask me a hundred times what, what that is, and I will, won't be able to give you that answer this year. I'd like you to bear with me, but the, we've got things in place right now, and as soon as I can let you know a couple of changes, I, I will let you know as soon as possible. Um, like I said, the team, this All Black team is, is very proud. We're proud of playing for this country. We know that what we, we didn't get what we needed again out of that out, out of the Steinlager series. And and what I know that our country should expect from this team is that we go away, we identify the key focuses and we go ahead and, and we fix it and we play at the level that, that we want to play to. Um, we, we'd love you to be proud of us and we want to make sure we do everything we can to do that. A, as a head coach, uh, there's been a lot of questions the last couple of weeks. Uh, let me tell you who I am. I'm strong. I'm resilient. I think I've proven that. I believe I've got a great feel and relationship with my players. I'm strategic. And I'm also accountable. And I take that on board. And I promise you, I, I understand that. And I'm really excited about the chance to, to show you what this team is made of, working alongside the players that we've selected in the squad. The, um, talking about the squad, um, because I want to make sure that the focus here is, is on the players as well. Um, delighted with Ethan De Groot coming in. He's done what we have asked him to do the last six or seven weeks. A um, lot leaner, a lot fitter, and excited with his selection. Also pleased with to welcome back Shannon Frizzell, who again, a lot of experience, has had interruptions uh, the last 18 months, but really feel he's in a good spot to come back in. We're bringing a couple of extra players into, into camp to cover a reasonably significant injury list at the moment. We'll bring Tyrell Lomax in. Um, Camp, we will be bringing Josh Dixon in. He, he joins the squad probably on more of a long-term basis because of Brody Retallick's smashed cheekbone. And Braden Enor will also join the group to cover uh, Jack Goodhue's knee while we assess that. So that's the state of the play. And the squad that we've just announced has got a job to do. And, and, and we just want to get stuck into our work and go and do it. Questions? Ian, you talk about changes in accountability. <coughs> Do you have to look at your role in this team and did stepping down or look, exploring that option? Absolutely. That's all. That's look. The, the look. There's no doubt. I'm under pressure. But can I just say I'm always under pressure, and I've always felt that pressure. And 
you know, external people will try to intensify that pressure, but it doesn't change the fact that as an All Black coach, um, you live in that world all the time. And so, um, does it hurt? Yes, it does. Um, does it mean that, the, you know, the key thing for me is to make sure that everything I do is about ensuring that we have robust processes to make sure we have got the right people sitting in the right seats. Those decisions you're talking about making, is that coming from you, from the board, or where is that driven from? Oh, everyone. And again, that's a, that's a collective. It, we're, we're in this as one. And what do you think of, oh, I guess there's been a lot of shit about the way this has been handled over the last week. Obviously last Sunday was cancelled, um, and it's well, effectively been a blackout for the best part of the week. Um, do you understand people's frustration? Do you, uh, are you happy with how well, the organisation you're employed by its handled? Oh, look, I understand the frustration. Um, all, all I want to say to you is this, on that, on that regard, is that I, I, as a head coach, would never, ever not communicate with my fan base when it's expected that I communicate with them. And if there is, if, so whatever happened then, I just want to give that category thing. I know my responsibility is to talk to the fan base. And, and if I knew that I was supposed to do that, I would do that all the time. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is we've had a process underway that when, when you look at, you know, we're coming off a disappointing series. We get that. We, we have to go and, and make sure that we have real, real conversations behind the scenes and, you know, and there's different levels of conversations and they've all been had. So um, that's all I can say about that. There's, there's a lot of people, you know, I don't know if you're not online, but, but the rest of us do, who um, quite frankly want to see change. What, what do you say to those people? Obviously, you're still here. You're still in charge. Yep. Look, I, I, I love the passion of our fans, and I love the opinions, and that is what it is. And but I guess I guess all I can assure people is that um, is the person that I am, and, and and my role in this team. I'm not here for any other reason to do the best thing I can for this team. And and right now, I can understand frustrations that we've lost a series and but my my goal my job is to put perspective around that to make sure we take the lessons and and this all black team comes out stronger and I want to be part of the solution so um, and will there be some change yes there will um, like I said I'll, I'll let you know shortly Ian there's been quite a few questions about yourself but also Sam Kane and his leadership what gives you the confidence he's still the right man to captain the squad oh I believe in him I believe in him as a as a person, as a leader. I think that um, the easiest thing to do when when a series doesn't go your way is to is to point the finger and blame and, and want people's neck. Um, I've got a lot of faith in Sam as as a player, as a person, and and in the leadership group around him. But you know, and, and that same group that we are talking about has been part of these same conversations we've had. And. And we all know there's a high degree of accountability when you put on an all black jersey, and and we need to be better. When would you like to see those changes made by getting the South Africans coming out pretty soon? Um, I, I, I'm going to quickly, and I'll let you know very soon. Are they are we talking about changes or? I, I really I I just out of respect for a couple of processes, I need to not say any more than that. But that's. Yeah, look, um, look, I've been through lots of tough processes, and this one um, ain't easy. And but you know what, what, what this jersey demands is is that we're honest with each other, and and we, but we've also got to be reflective. We've got to make sure that the lessons learned aren't we're not just reacting to sentiment out there unnecessarily, but that we're actually reacting to and come up with a plan that that's clear about how we want to play, and because ultimately this is all about. The All Blacks playing better, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's our goal. What those players, how they reacted to, I guess, when the test finished in Wellington to now, everything that's transpired publicly, <coughs> how you know they reacted? Well, a lot of them have gone home, <laughs> and and probably turned off their phones. You know, it's. But I, I just want to stress that no, no All Black enjoys being part of a of a team that loses, and 
and so there'll be a lot of hurt. That's why us getting together on for for a couple of days next week is going to be vital for us. Ozzy, can you just confirm who selected the squad now that Grant's not around anymore? Who, who were the guys that selected it? Um, so basically, it was the, the the selectors that selected this were the the existing three minus Grant Fox plus Joe Smith. So so myself, Plum, and, and Joe Smith. Um, so Joe Smith is now officially joined us in his role, and you know there's lots of talk about Joe's role, but Joe's role is as was flagged six months ago. Um, he is a he's come in as the independent selector. He he also has a secondary role of being an opposition analysis for for me, like a, an opposition head coach, and he is working with me behind the scenes on. The, I guess the strategic areas that, that we feel we need to move. So excited to have him on board. Um, he's not travelling with us, so we're clear. Um, and at this stage hasn't got a on the field role, but he is working hard with the coach, well, with me particularly on the strategic area of our game. Did you consider more wholesale changes as a selection trio to the squad? Oh, look, the selectors, we, we always do. And, and again, you know, like, I guess like our fans are searching for the answers, we, we go through and look at selection and say, well, do we, do we need to change some things in order to, to get the change in the movement that we need? And um, we've got a lot of faith in the group. We've obviously made a couple. We, we've got a... Um, and, you know, you may, may or may not see a few more at, at selection time. But um, at the end of the day, we've, we, we believe we've got a group. We, you know, we're just starting our campaign for the year when we've had a... And, and again, we didn't start the way we wanted, but it hasn't taken us off the plan that we're on. Hang on, just to clarify, you've talked about, obviously you don't want to talk about details about changes, but you asked about Sam Kane, you seem to respect him as a, a leader and as a, as, a, as a player. Does that mean then that you're saying that's not one of the changes possible? Or with respect to him as well, a we've player? named him as a captain. Huh? Yep. Does that answer that? Yep. Are you, you talked about accountability, obviously, and there, there are changes that are going to be made. But are you, are you sort of cognizant of the fact that you, you don't want to be, you know, the public might have a perception, depending on the changes that people being scapegoated here. How are you going to avoid people feeling that way about the changes that are made? Does that enter your, your mind at all? Oh, there's a lot of things. We, 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 when, when you make any changes, it goes through that. No, nothing's pleasant. But um, at the end of the day, the, 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 this, our, our, our whole planning is about how can this team improve and do what it needs to do on the park. And and so, like I said, I mean I know I'm accountable and but at the moment at at the moment when we look at the whole things, we've looked at we've identified clear areas of change that we think we need, that the group feels we need, and we're gonna instigate that and get stuck into our work. How how close were you to, to walking away? Not at all. Not close. Not at all. You mentioned there's always pressure on the all blacks coach, but for these two tests in particular, how much is riding on it for you as a coaching group? Oh, there's a lot riding on it. And, and, and what, what's riding on it is that we, we want we want to get our game going to the levels that, that we want and, and that we want our, our fan base and our, our country to be proud of this team. So, clearly. But, well, what, what an exciting challenge. You know, we're going to South Africa, we've got two tests, you know, in the, in the slip of the town championship. We've got... You know, both tests away against South Africa couldn't be harder in many ways, but when, when, you're, when your back's against the wall a little bit, then, you know, this is a great place for the All Blacks to be, we, and we've got to respond. Can you just confirm why Sam Kane was, was taken out of the game last week? Just because I felt we needed some shift at the, at the later stage of the game. It's been the main feedback from the players about what went wrong. Oh look, I've I think I've covered that off. I don't want to go into detail. I've just said there's been some robust conversations. Once we get together as a group, we'll start working on those smaller things. Just on South Africa, seeing much of <coughs> this series against Wales, and you know what? What do you make? Yeah, tough, tough to crack. Um, clearly made a lot of changes in that second test, um, and you know you could see them resting some players, but building through that third <coughs> test. Look, they're, they're tough. They're physical. They've They've got some areas of their game where they really are, are, are focused on, particularly around the mauling game, the driving game, and that's 
an area that, that hurt us in, in that third test. So we've got some clear areas that we've got to improve. You touched on Ethan de Groot before. I think it's his birthday today. Was that a nice phone call to have? <laughs> Actually, I didn't know it was his birthday. He should have told me that before this, but um, I'm sure he enjoyed the phone call. And just on him and Shannon, what have you seen from, I guess, the start of the month um, to now that have warranted a place in the squad? Oh, Shannon's just got through a bigger training load. We know that. We've been monitoring that. Um, you, you'll, you'll remember that he had eight or nine weeks off at super level, so it's really about getting him a lot, lot fitter. Ethan's, um, you know, in, in many, like he's dropped quite a bit of weight. He's, he's bouncing around, and you know, he's still a new All Black with lots to learn. But like I said at the time, we've got a lot of faith in him long term. We just need him to, to get the levels that we need him to. For you, uh, getting, I mean. I could imagine you don't want this, this South Africa game to come any sooner. Like how hungry are you to get another shot, for your team to have another shot um, at redeeming themselves, I guess, after the series lost to Ireland? Oh, we're, we're desperate. We're, we're desperate to perform against South Africa. And um, you have to be. And But it would be much nicer hearing us talk about a, a great performance over there than what we're putting up with now. Yeah, have you felt that some people have wanted you to fail ever since you've had this job and you've had to throw a kick at you and well, I'm kind of the COVID coach, aren't I? But um, oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't control anyone else's agendas. I've never seen this as a popularity contest. Like I said, the All Black coach is about connecting with a group of players and believing in them. And, and you've always got to test to see whether you're the right person in there. I believe I am. And I, but the comment I made about being resilient, well, I've, I've learnt that pretty quickly. Thank you, everyone. Just, just one more, um, Ian, sorry. Let me get Sam Kane, is it, or what? No, no, oh, okay. Kane. Um, it was a, you're not going to like it. Uh, there was a, there's, a, there's been a video circulating um, of a Kiri Wani after the game on Saturday. Um, did you have a chat to him? Uh, was it discussed between you and him at all? What, what do you make of that? Uh, look, it's, it's, um, reality is it's disappointing. It's disappointing, but two people were, we're mouthing off a little bit at each other. I, I, I wish that hadn't happened. Yes, I've talked to both people involved, um, and I know they've had a conversation with each other, and, and there's no issues going forward. I've, I'm also not overly impressed that people think that they should film that stuff and spread it, because, I, I mean, two people arguing in a pub I don't think is as big an issue as what people make of it.